Hey pilots, we're going to take a break from the decision making series because I saw this one on sale today and it's one of my favorite tier seven premiums. So I thought we would take it out for a ride and look at it a little bit and I'll talk about why I love it so much. Uh, very briefly, I'll put a marker down there for the first battle, but if you want to walk through a couple of the highlights of the aircraft with me, I'm going to take the first couple of minutes to do that uh, just to give you some of the ups and downs of this aircraft. One you have incredible speed because of the rocket engine back here, incredible acceleration. It's no problem going from your cruise speed to your boost speed. Um, and so that's excellent. You have a short boost, but it recharges fairly quickly. And again, your speed is excellent. So you know, you'll get up there pretty quick. Uh, you have great turn time as you would with the ax. You have a great climb rate. You have decent, you know, middling optimal altitude. It's not bad. And especially with a boost, you can just climb right into that yellow area and still be pretty fine. Your two weaknesses are one, your survivability, particularly resistance to fire is very low. And that impacts what kind of equipment you're gonna have on there, although your hit points are okay. And your resistance damage is also okay, though not great. So that's your primary weakness. Other weakness is you've only got one 23 millimeter cannon right here. The good news is this 23 millimeter cannon um, is actually like a tier 10 cannon. Uh, so it actually does very well. Let's see if we can find this on the USS Archery. Um, I think this is the same one that's on these guys. Yep, so there you go. This is the tier 10 23 millimeter. Um, you know, this one's on the Yak, but it's got the same stats as the one on the MiG-15, the Yak-30, the LA-15, the MiG-9, Yak-15, Yak-19. So this is a tier 10 gun on a tier 7 aircraft. Um, the other thing that doesn't show up in the stats, um, although this is you know a little bit of a weakness having only one gun, uh, this has a very long overheat time, and uh, you know that combined with the you know pretty solid DPS and long range means that the gun is not as bad as you would anticipate when first playing it. it does take some accuracy to dial in. I have a pilot with both Marksman One and Marksman Two on him. <laughs> I wish I could spend an extra point on firefighting for, for this aircraft in particular, but as you can see, I've got the bug where the icons aren't showing up, so that's not very helpful. Kit-wise, although I do this uh, specialized, right, so you can see that here. And I've got ultimate reinforced airframe. Um, I've done that to do resistance to fire. Um, I've got tail resistance damage. You can survive the wing resistance, as I talked about in the last video, you know, your wing being broken. But when the tail's broken, it really hurts your ability to um, kind of do maneuver-based things. And then also um, aircraft HP. Why? Because even with the maneuver, roll maneuver debuff on this, um, your roll rate is, is still quite fine, you know, 136 here. And then I have the boost, uh, acceleration, and top speed going up there. Again, because that puts you at such a great, for tier seven, this is incredible, right? Um, this is a wonderful top speed for tier seven. That allows you to um, outpace a lot of aircraft at tier seven and some even at tier eight, other light fighters, and chase down enemy heavies if you would like to, uh, and move from zone to zone. And so I have this one here. I've also got the engine cooldown rate stacked there um, and try to bring some of that boost availability back uh, just so I've got the boost available as often as possible. Um, on the these exhaust bleed system, I'm trying to help with this you know, resistance to fire. I actually think I have some of the gold ones I've got at some point, 131. So we'll do that just to make it 21. We've got a fire extinguisher. The reality is your guns aren't good here anyway. So, but because your flight characteristics are so good, you might as well, if you get the pilot injury, you might as well pull off and reset the fight um, and then just come back into it because, you know, they're not getting away from you. The combination of speed and, and maneuverability you have, it's going to be hard for them to shake you anyway. Um, so you can reset the fight fairly easily and come back in. But, you know, if you want to set it up differently, try and get that fire resistance up, you could. I just don't see, you know, normally I would say there's more than one way to build a plane like this, but the reality is, you know, again, your turn time is already so good. It feels weird putting maneuver on here. Um, you know, you can put the protection resistance on this kind of stuff, but it really doesn't really help you with the fire resistance. Um, and you don't necessarily need it for the other parts. And then this debuffs your resistance to fire and you don't need the cruise speed anyway. Um, if anything, the cruise speed hurts because when you deactivate the boost, when you're not using the rocket engine, you want to be that turn fighter, right? You don't want your speed that high. So it doesn't make much sense there. I do have the one of my experimental wing frames on here, or I did. 
We're going to pop it on real quick. There we go. I don't have this up at all. Why? I don't want to debuff the resistance or HP any further, and I don't need the maneuverability to be any greater. I just don't see a whole lot of benefit to that. Um, and so this is just here to give me a little bit of that roll maneuverability back, all right? A little bit more maneuverability in turns and not suffer too much of a penalty. You know, if you wanted to go all in on something, you could, again, I wouldn't do polished spin. I guess you could do reinforced airframe, um, but you're gonna lose some of that top speed that you've gotten from the boost. You know, it, it may end up uh, balancing itself out somehow, you know, when you've got all this stuff in here, but you also will see there's nothing in here that boosts your resistance to fire. And again, that's your, kind of primary issue. Uh, but if you want to do this, you know, you could do go this route. Um, you could put in the maximum boost uh, down at the bottom there as you're on your secondaries, kind of get some of that speed back. You know, you can, again, you don't care about the cruise speed debuff. It's only the maximum speed debuff you'd be worried about. And then on the other secondaries, you know, I'd probably take, uh, you've already got the resistance in there. So I'd probably take HP um, and then maybe AA guns. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the third one would be, but Maximum boost in HP, I would definitely take if you wanted to go this route. You know, that would certainly kind of improve these survivability stats a little bit. Uh, let's take, so like, yeah, let's just take this one for now and look at it very quickly. You know, so again, you got your resistance up, you got more HP, you know, all that's excellent. And then, you know, if you wanted to, you could get that 1% back. 1% uh, would be an extra, you know, 8 back. So you'd be minus 11 from the 799 that it was. Uh, get eight back you'd be at 790 which is still pretty good um, not super awesome but then I guess you could calibrate this and get it up a little higher if you wanted to but we're not going to do that we're going to stick with the lightweight wing frame for today the experimental one as we've got it there and let's go ahead and get into the first battle I'll show you some of what this can do hopefully we'll see both uh, you know be both bottom and top tier so you can see kind of a difference in uh, what you'd experience with this plane uh, but let's get into it and see what happens all right, we are back with our first battle here, this asymmetrical Cold Skies map. Not a fan of it, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, we are with a K6, also at Tier 7, and an XP-54, so we're top tier for this match. And then on the other team, we've got another Yak-3RD specialized as well, and a specialized XP-54, so a match there, and then an F4U who's probably going to be rolling around cranking these. What are we going to do? We're going to deal with the Yak-3RD, um, we're going to deal with the XP-54. The XP-54, um, believe it or not, is actually a really, really easy target for this thing. Uh, when the XP-54 was at the height of its power, I flew this as a counter to it. Um, it just does a lot of things well that allow it to take care of the XP-54. Uh, the XP-54 cannot uh, get further away, right, because I'm faster than it is. I can also turn better than he can and uh, I can also keep up with him you know, in terms of altitude and stuff because of that booster. You can see the guns aren't nearly as bad as advertised. You get them locked in. And you can get good stuff going. So we've got this locked in, and we're going to get some altitude. And we're also going to get to the next is zone. You can see they're headed there already. We want to get in on this action fast. We're going to use that boost to do so. Hunting heavies is one of the best things I enjoy doing with this plane. Um, you would think with a cannon that wouldn't be a big deal, but you know, it wouldn't be as nice to handle that. But the reality is because heavies are big targets, it's easier to hit with this thing. And you can see I've got all sorts of time on the, on the overheat, right? I can just hold this thing down for a while. Uh, and you're in good shape for just tracking those guys down. Okay, what do we got? We got a pair of multi-rolls around me. This is what I mean by you want to slow down, right? You want to be able to stay on the tail of these aircraft when they come into the zone and deal with them. Um, you don't want to be still rocketing around, so it's okay that you lose that speed. You know, this booster is just there for avoidance, uh, for defensive, and also for getting around the map for offensive. And you can see there the range of this cannon is spectacular. 800 meters is good. And then when you get in close like this, right, you can really do it. I'm standing on the uh, flaps here. Bringing it down, McCaffey helps me bring that. Uh, we see the enemy XP-54, let's go chase him now, why not? Look at that, we got boost climbing up, right? We're just getting right where we need to be. Coming back down, but still retaining pretty good, right? We're inside that uh, white zone for our ceiling, so that helps with some of these characteristics. 
Cappy wants a piece of me, but he's not going to get it, and he's dead. No, there's, there's no avoiding me at this point, right? No getting away. He cannot outturn this aircraft. He cannot run from this aircraft. Uh, of course, a bot would still kill, but there it is. All right, I see our other nemesis down here, the other guy, 3RD. Let's go see how he's set up. All right, let's go just take a peek, take a swat. Is he in a turn build? Is he in a speed build? Is he in a protection build? You know, let's just kind of get a duel going and see how, see how he is. We may not have to, maybe because of the presence of our bots that we're able to um, deal with this. Uh, let's see also how this pilot handles rudder control, right? Uh, does he have that slave to his keyboard the way I do? Uh, so he didn't outturn me there. Felt like I was keeping pace with him. So he may be built in a speed or protection build or hybrid build like I am as well. Right? Even this uh, armored ground attack aircraft, right? You see I'm just, just chipping away pretty easily. And because I'm essentially a turn fighter without that booster on, uh, it's easy to get right back on his tail and start it again. Oh, thought we had him that time. This is a rough zone with AA, so we're gonna crank this guy and then get out of here. We're gonna take those 60 points and then we'll run a little bit. We're gonna get up here and go after these heavies. Uh, make the light fighters below us and the AA below us have a tougher job. We do not want to deal with taking a whole lot of damage because of our fragility. There we go, zone capped. All right, we're moving on. We've got three of these. We've got a flight of bombers headed in over there. This flight of bombers looks like it's gonna capture the airfield. So we are going to retake it. We use that boost, get our speed back up. And again, you see we cut right back up into the red, right? And the Cappy, we're gonna try and save his butt. I'm not sure we're gonna get there in time, but we're gonna try it. And there we go. K6 is dropping a bomber. Shouldn't be too long before we have this back in. Here's an easy 60 right here with a tornado. I'm gonna try and avoid the head-on with them a little bit. You know, tornadoes like to turn into you. We've seen that in multiple matches, right? Uh, I mean, multi-role bots to let to do that. And again, I can just sort of, you know, hold on that trigger for as long as I need to. It may take a little longer, but we're going to be a-okay. All right, the I-210 is back. He's flying away, so we're going to dive down here and see if we can get a piece of some of these. We really want capture points quickly, all right, so we can get these guys out. Yep, there we go. And with the K-6 and the Cappy and all three of our planes here, I think. Oh, we lost the K. Oh, he's back over there getting the bomber. Good. Excellent. That's uh, playing your aircraft well, knowing, knowing what you should do there. Uh, we see the 3RD over this way. Let's head that away. Why not? Uh, let's get some altitude up. Let's make a little bit of an advantage if we fight him. Oh, okay, we see the XP-54 coming in as well. So we want to pay attention to that. Oh, and uh, the Yak got, or the, uh, there was a Yak that torched the uh, 3RD. We do not want this multi-roll retaking this zone for us. He's already lost a lot of HP, so we're just going to be on cleanup duty here. And there we go. Stand the plane up with that rudder. Come back around. We do not want any part of the Typhoons. There we go. All right, so the wing is damaged. It's not going to matter against the Typhoon. If it was against the player, this might be an issue. But it's not. So I'm not, not in this point in this place. We don't have a place to repair at. Um... Go after this guy. I mean, really, we're at squall line. So what we want to do is start chipping off the aircraft as much as possible. And there's three in this zone, including the yak right there. So let's get up a little bit, and let's come down, and let's prioritize him as target number one. Right. We start off again with that long range. Just chew in again. Let's go ahead and use our pneumatic assist. He's ignoring us. We're gonna make him pay for that. All right, we've got two more seconds of that pneumatic. Looks like he might have kicked his as well. But he's already reeling from a numerous crit criticals, right? Uh, because of the low survivability of the aircraft. And there we go. So as top tier, you can see 
you know, this plane hangs pretty well. Um, and again, you know, survivability really is probably the only weak spot. That cannon is not nearly as bad as, as you would think it would be, um, especially with all the accuracy adjustments you can make, because that's really the only big deal. You got decent DPS as long as you can keep it on target, and your accuracy mods and skills will help with that immensely. Um, and so even though you don't have a gun slot per se, just the gun sight itself is, is plenty good for that. So, Lemon aircraft down, we did not die. Um, you know, we got three sectors captured, which is incredible for a yak that we're able to move between zones like that, right? So this is really good at being able to do kind of jack of all trades kind of stuff, right? So anyway, there you go. Uh, we captured three, six, six total. You know, I think we, McCaffrey and I combined on the first one, so really maybe five total. Uh, they got one, two, three. So there you go. Five zones captured to three zones captured. As I said, 90% of the time, you know, who wins is who has the most zone captures. Let's try this again. I've got plenty of these, so I'm going to keep that in there, even though it's really only an extra one, I think, 20 to 21. We'll keep it in nonetheless. Let's go one more battle, and we're going to hope we see bottom tier here because um, I want to show you, you know, how does this aircraft perform against tier eights. So that would be lovely to kind of get in there and and be able to see that. Let's see if this says, oh, it has, lovely. We're gonna get that firefighting skill for now, especially because we do have that turn rate. I can always come back and reset this later for silver. But with one point left, you know, this is probably your best bet. Maybe view range, I just don't think you, you need it necessarily in a plane like this. So we're gonna go with that for now until we can get another million XP and open up some other option in here. But let's take that for the time being. And let's dive into battle number two. Okay, we're back this time with a five sector map. We've got the mining plant, two command centers, two garrisons. And on this one, we are gonna to be top tier again. Unfortunately, that's okay. We'll get to face off against an MB-5, another interesting aircraft, which should be back up for sale here in another month or so <clears throat> as we approach the one year anniversary of its marathon. Beneath us on our side, a team of a P-39 and a Mustang 1A on their side, P-39 and a Zero. There is no central zone to get to, so we're going to want to command, you know, three of these five zones, and hopefully one of those is the mining plant. The mining plant, of course, is worth three zones if you can hold on to it, and so that's going to be important to us, and we're going to want to head there. So we'll chip in on this zone and then head that way to uh, the mining plant and see if we can knock down maybe a bomber that comes in or a ground attacker. Again, as top tier with this gun, it's really not an issue you know, to, to chip in and do that. You now up tier against like a P-29 or maybe a RB-17, yeah, that's gonna be problematic, of course. Um, there's far more HP to burn through, uh, but this is what it is. All right, we're gonna let him have that one. <clears throat> we got the one before this, we were both shooting at and uh, there's 10 more capture points here, so we're going to push on into the next zone. And of course, we would take a flak burst after the zone's already captured, but so be it. You can see that boost when I'm up in the yellow. I could not hit my top speed. So that is an argument for using the boost to climb vertically as opposed to staying up high. If I had been at 1,500 meters instead of 2,000, I would have been here a lot faster, right? But as it is, I'm a little slower because I stayed higher. So if you do get this aircraft, stay at that 1500 when transitioning between zones. It's going to make me more slow. I'm going to crack down on him, though. Um, yeah, maybe stay at that 1500 so that you've got the um, ability to really utilize that top speed. And down goes a bomber. We're kind of hoping the other bomber comes in, but there we go. All right, here's the MB-5. We've got 2v1 right here, so I don't think Crash is gonna get out of this alive. He dives on the Mustang. We're not gonna let him do that. And there we go. ju 88s a little more. He wants to shoot at me. We don't want any part of that. We're better off doing this one. He's better off taking the um, taking care of the IL two. We're not going to finish him. We're going to have to loop. And yeah, he's going after the IL two. So that's both the ground attackers down. 
let's get over here and uh, let's push the tempo, All right? We're gonna kick the boost. We're gonna go up to 1500 meters. See now the speed, see the top speed gets so much better right there, right? We're able to crack it out. And we want a piece of the MD5 again. We just want to flip the zone for 130 points from doing so. If we can get crashed, that's 60 of those points. Although here's a light aircraft flying very slow. Let's go ahead and take those 40. Then crash is actually going slow because he just tried to climb. And he's doing a lot of active maneuvering. All right, we did manage after completely dogging out one aircraft in almost a second. You know, get rid of um, and lose the overheat there on that one 23 millimeter. But again, you saw how long it was. So. All right, they've got our command center. We've got theirs. <clears throat> That'll be interesting. Again, we just want to hold on to the mining plant and one of these command centers and we're in good shape. Sorry, allergies and drainage today. Got to clear my throat there. So let's see what we can do. Uh, so he's engaged here. Oof, that was tough. Uh, looks like he's got a ground attacker up there. Our guys are going to go back this away. What do we want to do this? What do we wanna, where can we be most helpful? Um, 2v1? I don't know, man. Well, if we want to push this aircraft, why not? Let's get in it. Let's get in it and see what happens. We have the speed. We have our boost back. We can smack the zero on the first pass. And we can deal with the... MD5 at our leisure. Yes. Okay. Good. Let's turn side on to him. Let's take him in the vertical. Yep. Good. Good, good, good. Let's go ahead and kick the pneumatic assist. We're going to swing around on him. Easy to stay inside of him. This MD5 might be built for um, speed instead of turn. I'm probably going to build mine that way, so that's not a criticism of the way Crash is playing it. Just the reality of uh, the way these aircraft are done. We got his engine. That's why he's able to keep up with us in the turn right here. Maybe do a little flaps. And again, we're just going to use that we have to avoid another aircraft coming in. And there we go. Okay. Now, what do we got on our tail? Something. What is it? Might be the Zero back. Might be another aircraft. Oh. An XP-55. And we're going to take some hits here because there's just too many aircraft in the area. Unfortunately, it is what it is. The XP-55 was not there originally. He's changed aircraft, I guess? Or did I just miss that in the lineup? I guess I did. Oh, there's a fourth one. Okay. There we go. Server's not cheating. We're going to be fine. Uh, we're going to go uh, retake. Yeah, I'm not sure I spent too much time over there. All right, we are going to take these two zones back, no problem, and then we're gonna get, we're gonna send the bots over there. That's where they need to be. We need to get these gone. We also um, need to get uh, these players out uh, at the squall line, which is not hit yet, surprisingly, but that's okay, we'll deal with that. All right, I'm gonna stay up high for the time being. There are all these guys are down here. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of the that one. Let's avoid these guys. I really would have preferred to kill the other aircraft. Because then we would have had this zone flipped as it is, unfortunately with the 190 doing attack runs on us, and uh, just is what it is. All right, we need to get that plant before the mining plant rolls over and they get back even with us. We are at Squall Line though. This is a great chance to take advantage right, of uh, this time period, get some aircraft out, um, kind of force them to deal with having not enough attacking aircraft to do damage. All right. We're 
We're hoping our bots can flip that, you know, mining plant zone. down because this P47 is absolutely going to just lock in on me as best he can. That's all right. We're going to put him down too. Uh oh, we got him coming. I might have to deal with the entire Air Force here and that's exactly what's going to happen. And we can get rammed. <laughs> So there you go. Unfortunately, you know, just uh, a match that uh, we could not pull out of. Uh, but hopefully this has shown you some of the skill that comes. Uh, I don't want I guess skill is not the right word. Some of the benefits and advantages that come with that Yak uh, 3RD. I really do enjoy it as an aircraft. Um, I think it can do, do very good things in battle. Uh, and I think it handles itself pretty well. So there you go. And they're going to take it with a flipping of the mining plant. And uh, that will be what it will be. Uh, it's kind of a tough map because of that. You know, the, when you don't have a player who can actively flip the mining plant and you're dependent on the bots, it can get a little dicey, unfortunately. But um, it's also not really worth staying in the mining plant, right? Um, it was such an interesting thing because I, I'll have to go back and look at the replay, but we seem to have it. Um, and we seem to be on top of the uh, bombers and ground attack aircraft. Um, perhaps, uh, perhaps a flight from the command uh, center got in there and flipped it. That's mostly what I would assume. Um, let's check real quick. Yeah, because like the ILT didn't get the mining plant. Oh, he did. Okay, so a bomber snuck by us somewhere along the line and got the mining plant. Did this one? Yeah, so the two bombers somewhere in the midst of all that snuck by us. So you know what, maybe we do need to reevaluate and uh, <laughs> take swap the firefighting for the, um, just rely on the fire extinguisher and the coolant and swap that for a better view range that might have come in handy, who knows. So there you go. Um, good matches, couple of interesting ones. Um, definitely enjoy playing this. You know, I don't know if you wanna pick it up or not. I'm not as big a fan of the 302 in this package. A um, couple of reasons for that. One is lack of maneuverability. So you can get that high speed up. And uh, you do have a little better altitude, I think, as well. Yeah. But um, this is kind of a mini heavy. You do not have the maneuverability. But you do also have still some of the same problems, right? Like this is a Resist Fire 18, and I've already got this on here because. I don't think the new mag's going to do you any good, right? You're not going to get that down low enough, even with gear, because um, I've got a full turn build on, right? It's just just not there. And although you do have these four 20 millimeters, they're 1941 20 millimeters, right? So uh, they're kind of an older version, not quite as good, and maybe not um, not quite as powerful. Although the cumulative output's pretty good, but you got a shorter range and all that. So again, not as big of a fan of this one but um, it may be to your liking as well. Um, but this one, 3RD, is, is pretty good. It was replaced, uh, it was taken out of the shop for a while because it was underperforming and replaced with the LA-9RD. Interestingly enough, I think of the two, the LA-9RD is the one that underperforms these days and the ACT 3RD in the current meta actually performs much, much better. So uh, just my two cents. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have a Yak 3RD, sound off below on whether or not you enjoy having it or if you can't stand it, what it is about it that uh, turns you off. Um, I do enjoy it and wanted to share that with you. Um, the special paint that comes with this is Parade Camo. It is interestingly enough, uh, you can see the spinner here, camo that would be associated with the Normandy Neiman Squadron, a French squadron that flew in the Soviet Union during World War II ace squadron very good look them up interesting fellows of course they never flew the 3x 3rd and um, oddly enough uh, world of warplanes for some reason has their camouflage on all the planes that they did not fly the most and the planes that they flew the most combat sorties on we don't have the camo for which is a little frustrating at times but nonetheless if that's of interest to you it's just a five percent camo but um, it does it does look great obviously and uh, you do have a little French spinner right there. 
So me, I prefer just these uh, for the extra survivability and concealment they bring uh, to the game, especially with a plane like this that could use a little extra help in the survivability arena. Uh, and you guys enjoy the week, enjoy the planes. Um, if there's any Agni flying for you or questions you have, let those know. Be, let me know below what those are. Throw a thumbs up if this was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, and we will catch you on the next one.